Hello, this is the Harmonize Life podcast by Nkem Ofonabo, the Harmonizer on Africa Business Radio, where we educate you on the need to move away from the narrative of balance to harmony, because balance promotes the strive for equilibrium between work and life. However, the extent to which one is a priority over the other changes during an individual's day, week, month, year and even a lifetime harmony on the other hand is a deliberate choice to meaningfully deeply and rewardingly prioritize the key areas of life such that you are living a wholesomely productive and fulfilling life at work at home in the society and within self so welcome to the harmonized life podcast Welcome back to the Harmonize Live podcast with Nkem Ofonabo, the Harmonizer on Africa Business Radio. During the research for my book, The Harmonized Life, I engaged in a comprehensive survey that provided a first-hand information from employees of different organizations and industries. Their responses provided me with issues that employees are probably silent about and clearly suggest that these are the things that need to be done to promote a great place to work. And what exactly is a great place to work? A collaborative, enriching workplace that breeds clarity, trust, engagement, creativity, innovation, diversity, inclusion, and further translates to productivity. So when we come back, we are going into our guest segment where I introduce you to my guest, Mrs. Patricia Aderibigwe. She is a people and culture enthusiast, passionate about employer branding, employee engagement, employee experience and well-being, as well as organizational culture. We'll be discussing the topic, what initiatives it made available will promote or help employees to be more productive at work. So stay with us. Welcome back to the Harmonize Life podcast with Nkem Ofonabo, the Harmonizer on Africa Business Radio. I have here with me, Mrs. Patricia Aderi Bibe. Hello, ma'am. I'm so excited to have you. <laughs> it's nice to be here, Nkem. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Welcome. Uh, let me be honest with you. Connecting with you on LinkedIn, it's one of my most interesting discoveries and it's so excited that I'm meeting you for the first time, you know, and we're going to talk about a topic that both of us are passionate about, mm -hmm. work-life harmony, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. tell me more about Patricia and why work-life harmony is so important to you. Okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it was a, a very interesting discovery for me as well when mm -hmm. I found you. I don't know who found each other. <laughs> I'm sure I found it first. <laughs> okay. I was, uh, I remember it like yesterday mm -hmm. and we were talking about integration. I was talking about work-life integration. You yes. said, oh, I want to think about how many, and then we chatted offline. Mm -hmm. So, it, yes. So Patricia, who am I? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's simple. It's just as simple. I'm a, a working woman. I'm mm. a working mother. Mm -hmm. I'm a working wife to somebody. <laughs> I'm a daughter. Well, mm -hmm. okay, both parents are gone, but obviously I was working when mm -hmm. they were still alive. And I'm a working sister. Mm -hmm. I'm a friend. So it's who I am and my work. I've always been passionate about everything I do. Mm -hmm. um, and I've seen the evolution of work. 
Uh, being in human resources, you go back as far back as the industrial age and you think about work mm -hmm. being one part of one's life. Yes. And there was a time when people worked and worked and then they retired and then they died. Mm. You know, so, so they didn't leave. They did not <laughs> leave. They just worked and worked, retired and died. Mm. And, you know, and, and that period is not that long ago. True. So generations, you know, now have tried to do things slightly differently. Mm -hmm. And it's been a struggle. I don't think anyone can say I've got it so perfectly. True. You know, it's like, you know, when people say they struggle with alcohol and mm. they say they are recovery mm. alcoholics. So, but there are things you do that allow you to liberate yourself from that constant struggle and mm. search for something that probably does not exist. Mm. That That's just the difference. We'll get there. <laughs> I need to. <laughs> I need to find that search. <laughs> right. Right. Awesome. Okay. Tell me what your typical day is like. And how do you navigate the, the various demands of being a career executive, a wife, a mother, a mentor to some of us, <laughs> and everything in between? Oh, yes, yes. So it's a question I've been asked for close to 25 years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, my answer, I think I struggled at first, but then I found a sweet spot. There was a time when I really, really put my finger on it. And that was the period um, I was I was already um, a director and a board director in the UK, okay. in the city of London. You know, a woman, maybe early 30s, appointed to the board, wow. black, <laughs> Nigerian, in a world dominated yeah, by right. white male. <laughs> right, exactly. So... And then, so people start to ask you these questions and you start to think more deeply about mm. it because sometimes you're on autopilot. You just work and then you find yourself struggling with so many things. And with this journey, I remember the first time I thought, yes, that's really it. And, um, when I was pregnant with my, so, you know, I had my, kids before I, t I rose mm, um, or, yeah probably about the same time you know it was a struggle and then my third child came much later I was already a board director mm. when I had him and for me when that question came at that time it was so much easier to understand the question because yeah. sometimes you get some questions and you have an answer True. and you're not even convinced <laughs> you don't even live you're still struggling <laughs> and struggling and trying to find your way exactly around it. yes so that was when i think i truly grasped the the importance of mm. that and why because i was pregnant as a board director Ooh. and you know my first two kids i was maybe mid-management so it was easy so, and at that time, and that pregnancy, I, I actually had the baby. I went to a board meeting the day before he was born. Oh, my God. Right. <laughs> wow. So, when the question is being asked, you know, mm. the difference is this. I, I stopped living life and work mm. as compartments. They stopped being compartment for me. Mm. Because at that point as well, I'd already understood the meaning of work in the scheme of things. So when you look at life, you know, if you think about waffles, you know, mm, they're in squares. Of course. <laughs> so one square can be work, one square can be life, one square can be leisure, and the other is voluntary work. No. You know, they are um, not separate. They are not separate. Mm. So we need to look at it as a steak, <laughs> like, True. you know, like a big steak, and all the vegetables are in mm -hmm. <laughs> coke and the nuts. Yes. Yeah. And so by the time I understood wow. that, by the time I understood that, I was able to understand that it is not torture for me to work the day before my mm. baby was born because I understood that it wasn't a separation. There wasn't right. that kind of separation that That's leads so you profound. to, yeah, yeah, that leads you to this schizophrenia. Yeah, mm. Then you're always constantly unhappy Look what they've done to me. No, it's not what they've done to you. If you understood. And that's because perhaps the work was meaningful. I exactly. understood the exactly. meaning of the work in my life. Exactly. 
works out. You right. Know? Yes. You know, that's also what I talk about. I said I help people find meaning at work because when you are doing a meaningful work, there's no way you won't work optimally. You will definitely work optimally and of course you'll be so productive. So I love that. I love that. Absolutely. Hmm. Interesting. So tell me, in the scheme of things, what exactly is a great place to work for you? Okay. Um, so a great place to work, again, it, it's really a journey. Mm. And also it depends sometimes on where you are mm-hmm. in life. Life as a whole, but there are some fundamental truths, you know, like there are just some fundamental mm-hmm. truths in life. You know, we can argue about some things, but there are some colors, you know, this is red, this mm-hmm. is red. We, mm-hmm. we shouldn't really be arguing about that unless we're colorblind. <laughs> tell you, oh, it's, it's turquoise red, right? Tomato red. stew or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> if we're colorblind, we could mm-hmm. argue, but you know, there are some universal truths. So, you know, I think a lot since coming back to Nigeria, I think a lot about the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Mm. I think a lot about that, you know. So when we talk about a great place to work, there are, it can mean different things to different people. But as I said, universally, is there psychological safety? Mm. One. Hmm. You know, so because people have to, yeah, you know, we, we've spent a lot of time on health and safety, you know, make sure that the physical, the, the roof is not going to collapse and people mm-hmm. are not going to drop, the, you know, with the staircase and all of all that. Those economics. Exactly. <laughs> you know, physical. Mm. They're the intangible stuff. You know, that's when you start talking about climate and culture. Mm. Those things that you feel that being here, I feel safe. safe. And safety is not just physical. True. True. Emotional safety, psychological safety. Do you come to work Mm. with so much agitation? I don't think I've heard this before. (laughs) Seriously. (laughs) Mm. So, and to me, you know, so I feel that that's so important because sometimes we take that for granted. We think that if we pay well, that's the great Mm. place to where you just give them, you know, good money and that's it. But mm, you then go through this abuse and people who are doing it they don't even think of it as abuse uh, because it's second nature Mm. and the recipient even gets used to it you know and they even expect it i'm getting emotional (laughs) (laughs) Mm. so uh, that would rank really high for me when Mm. i'm thinking of a great place to work obviously trust is another Mm -hmm. and you know it's, it's usually like embedded in it because you can't trust a person hopefully hopefully i hope you wouldn't trust a person that is abusing you <laughs> i hope not but uh-huh. it does happen so if there is trust that trust is about integrity really so um do i even when something is not happening to my liking mm. it is what i think your intent is that could disturb and disrupt my equilibrium True. if i thought you had honorable intent Mm. and so i trust that you are after my well-being even if some things are wrong at that time it doesn't destroy my trust because i feel i know that whatever it is you're doing is coming from a place of care genuine care yeah Mm. yeah we make mistakes we're human so i never expect perfection from another human that's what I leave to God. Mm. I can't expect perfection from another human because I'm not perfect. So there are times when things go wrong. I could, you know, do things and, you know, a, a bad day. You know, mm. a bad day can happen anytime to anybody. But true. that does not make it a bad place to work. Mm. But even when good days have happened in some places, it doesn't make it a good place a great place to work. So I think there are some underlying elementary stuff. And I think all of us, all of us, even if you are a colleague or a boss Mm. or a peer, because you see, sometimes we always think it is the boss that's doing the wrong thing to the subordinate. And that's what we do even here in society. We think it's the leader. Correct. Everyone, you have a responsibility. Correct. And I have seen where subordinates bully their bosses Mm -hmm. 
bosses are scared of some subordinates. I know it's usually the other way around, right? But I have seen, obviously, my decades of experience. Mm-hmm. You can mm-hmm. imagine what I've seen. Mm-hmm. And so it is important to understand that it is not just the leader who, who, who makes a culture happen. It is everybody. The leader has a big, gigantic mm. role. Absolutely. Because your body language speaks volume as a leader. But a great place to work has many elements, but involves everybody True. being their neighbor's keeper. Hmm. Let's take a break to digest this. <laughs> it's a lot. So when we come back, we'll go deep into the topic of discussion. Thank you so much. You're listening to Africa Business Radio, where you get up-to-date insights on the Africa business landscape. Log on to www.africabusinessradio.com. Your favorite shows are available on podcasts. Download them on our website and mobile app. Africa Business Radio, towards a profitable Africa. Welcome back to the Harmonize Life podcast with Nkem Ofonabo. I have my guest here, Mrs. Patricia Aderi Bibe. So tell me, what is the role of um, the work environment as a determinant of health and well-being of employees? I know we talked about culture mm-hmm. and how it's a responsibility of both the line managers and, of course, the employees, the subordinates. So what is the role of the work environment? Okay, <laughs> you come, you are a genius with questions. <laughs> okay, so that's a brilliant question. Thank you. So when we talk about environment, you know, there is the physical environment, mm. and there is the psychological environment. <laughs> I can't just deal with physical, you know. So you know, and there is the mental environment True. and spiritual environment. So, so I'm thinking first, let's take the physical. Okay. Um, so it's, I mean, many companies kind of woke up one time after this Silicon Google came in and everybody mm. said, have you been there? You know, I need a snooker table and a football table and all of that. Well, that's fine. But mm. for me, a clean environment, yeah, it would be nice if it was avant-garde mm-hmm. and, you know, like, you know, like you had the, the standing tables for, you know, because as we all know, Sitting is the new smoking, Mm -hmm. and we're all sitting down for like 20 hours on Zoom and everything, and we say we're not smoking. We are smokers now. Mm. Let's face it. So we need to do something. That's a different topic for another day. So um, so the physical environment needs to be clean, hygienic. That's, Mm. you know, it's almost like we take it for granted. So it's like a given. So clean environment. Okay, right. Mm. But it's also nice if you are that way inclined to make it, you know, pleasing in a, a place of pride. Mm-hmm. You know, like sometimes when you give, when you put some employees in certain environment, their swag. True, exactly. <laughs> their, swag, <laughs> their swag will be different. They will take selfies and post it. This is where I work. Mm-hmm. You know, or even when you look at the facade from outside, have you seen situations where you walk past on a, 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 on a street and you, you are with your friends and you say, oh, that's where I work. And they Always look exactly. Say, this is, where I, this is yeah. where I work, and the and the and their street cred mm-hmm. <laughs> goes up. Imagine if we're pointing to something. In fact, they would not even say that's mm. where I work. They just spit back. So I think for for me, it is worth whatever that's you true. need to put in, you know, to make it a pleasant, and you know, hopefully one that you know make the that 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 makes the pride in the work. Uh, 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 one that employees can really shout about because it's mm. all part of employer branding. Of course. Then we come into something beyond the physical. If we come into something beyond the physical, the environment is, I'm thinking now, social. It speaks mm. to your heart, you know, emotionally. So when I come into the environment, 
Is it caustic? Is it toxic? Is it friendly? Do I look behind my back wondering what somebody's saying next? Oh, you know, so that's an environment. So I, I, you know, I look at the environment. Sometimes it's even better to be in a physically dowdy environment where the, the social environment is brilliant because mm-hmm. you might actually look beyond the dowdiness. I mean, I, I won't trade one, but if I have to pick, You'll pick the other yeah, yeah, I'll pick that because, you know, nowadays we're social animals, humans. Yeah. So you, you come in and, you know, you feel that your neighbor is aggressive or passively aggressive or those types of situations. So I think for me, that environment is really key. And that's that's where culture also comes in. Culture true. is is an environment. <laughs> yeah, yes, true. yes. So you know, people. Some people hang out with their work colleagues as friends. Some people mm-hmm. make friends. Some people even meet their husbands at work. Of course. Yeah. Because that's where we spend the majority it, of our time. Exactly. <laughs> so when we think environment, let's think physical. Let's think emotional. <laughs> let's mm-hmm. think spiritual. Because when I talk about spiritual intelligence, you know, I've written some little things on that, you know, and people were like, oh my God, SQ, I've never even heard of that. Is when, I, when what we're mm-hmm. talking about here is that, is there meaning in what you do? And is there meaningful relationships? So collaboration, you talk about collaboration a lot. Collaboration is actually meaningful and it's spiritual it's because it. there are times when you have done work and you feel somebody is stealing your work and taking credit. credit. Exactly. Mm. So that environment can't be good mm. because the person who, the, the, the voiceless, True. you know. So there's be, always that um, effort rewarding balance. <laughs> oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Yeah. And then, of course, there's the reward recognition. Mm. You know, do we recognize or, or are there just some people that always hug the limelight mm. and then the unsung heroes are just really hidden and they are there. They are not included because naturally maybe they don't have the disposition or they they don't yeah, have the voice true. so we talk about executive deafness all the time you know yeah. so how do you make sure you are not deaf you know so the leader's role in pulling that Everyone together and together. making the environment productive hmm. is so critical wow I'm so glad I'm talking to you. Like, I feel so fulfilled like we're having this conversation. Seriously. (laughs) Wow. So we've touched the physical environment. We've touched the social, the emotional, and we've also talked talked about the spiritual environment, which is key, you know, finding meaning. I I keep talking about that meaningful work. Okay, and I know that majority of this um, responsibility lies with the human resources. But I always tell people that HR is beyond, or people management is beyond the HR department. So aside the HR department or HR personnel, how can people leaders, line managers, you know, how can they provide a sustainable work environment where people and business thrive. Hmm. No, I totally, two hundred percent, agree with you. You are a girl after my heart. <laughs> because people, you know, it takes a village to mm-hmm. raise a child. It is not one department mm-hmm. that you know is responsible for True. managing people. No, I mean the HR department. The HR has obviously a, a, a big role. They're like, you know, effectiveness of the HR as I see it is uh, almost like you are mostly invisible Mm, because you like the architect, you you create systems and processes and infrastructure Mm. that allow the people leaders, the the people managers to manage Mm -hmm. in a way that align with the collective vision. So that's one thing. The leadership of the organization actually direct, they, they, they show the way. Mm. So HR works in collaboration with, with the, the leaders. leaders. Yeah, to, 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 to make, you know, maybe actualize the leader's vision. And then they obviously co-create the vision mm-hmm. and all of that. But I think everybody who manage, who would supervise people, must ask themselves one question. Mm. There is a book. Why should anyone be led by me? 
that's always easy. Is your tag? I think that was yeah. I got it said <laughs> yeah. by you. Yes, I remember now. Yeah. Why should anyone be led by me? Is it because now. somebody bestowed a title on you that you are supervisor X Y Z? If your staff could hire and fire you, what do you think they would do this minute? Mm. So for me, I think when there's that accountability and the and the the the, the infrastructure allows people the leaders to be humble enough to listen to themselves and to ask themselves those types of questions because they have a serious role True. in product making sure people are productive but people mistake that to mean i must whip mm. i must be you know no you have to be firm every leader needs to understand there is a boundary you know, between yourself and your staff, there is mm -hmm. a social boundary. Before yes. social distancing yes. came yes. with COVID, True. a leader really needs to keep a healthy distance. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes, you know, it's like somebody say, oh, I'm my friend, my, my daughter is my friend. <laughs> mm, no, you are the mother of that child. You know, take Recognize that responsibility. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so if you need to discipline, True. do that. You must do that. Mm. But when you discipline, the thing I also say is that you have to be hard on the issue, but mm. soft on the person. Mm. That's just the distinction. So do not be confused. Your role is to lead and leadership can mean being hard on the issue. You are, you are steering a ship somewhere. Are you going to wait for the ship to sink because mm. you are too soft? No. You gotta, you gotta be hard. There are some hard decisions you have to take. Don't and be. The issue is, it's around productivity <laughs> Thank you. and profitability. Thank you. But when you are dealing with people, also know that, you, also know that you have to be soft because people need that softness. Correct. Right. That's it. <laughs> I got it. That's the iron, iron glove yes. with a velvet um, jacket mm. there. Yeah. Awesome. Yes. So finally, finally, what are those initiatives? Now, let's spell it out. What are those initiatives, if made available, will make employees more productive? Mm. Okay, I think for me, I always take it that we can't keep recharging batteries. Mm. They die. Mm. <laughs> so you have to find this internal generator that keeps making the person generate their motivation internally mm, yes intrinsic intrinsic mm -hmm. right so how do you get the intrinsic thing going the first thing is people need to fall in love with the brand mm. do they really love oh, working there or are they just coming there to pay the bill because you know i know sometimes if you can't do what you love you can love what you do mm. i know i know i know but when you are able to fall in love with the brand the work that's one thing. And to fall in love with a brand and work takes a lot of effort from both parties. True. So it's not one person doing it and they're just trying to quote you all the time because you also need to understand that the company that you work for needs to be successful mm -hmm. and your contribution to that is important. So if you, if you have brand loyalty, mm -hmm. brand loyalty, yes. yes, you would be happier. True. Isn't it going to be such torture if you hate the brand you work for? You hate what you do. You I don't be a happy person. That's right. <laughs> that's right. So you 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 know that there is a big game going on, mm. the purpose, and you are you know if you understand your vision where you are going to, it doesn't mean that where you are at is there, mm. but it's a path to it. So try and fall in love with it. And if you can't do that, please find another job. I always True. say that, you know, just, you know, do something else. And um, so that for me is the first thing. So as a leader, make people see the big picture, make them connect. The sense of belonging and, you know, it's so important. Do they feel that they belong? Mm. How, how do you bring them together? The inclusiveness, True. you know, that's important for uh, a leader to, to 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 focus on, and then the people, the us, mm -hmm. us people, <laughs> us workers, <laughs> need to also remember that you know we should not, we should not kill the goose that mm. lays the golden egg. Very key. Let's not talk against our brand. That's where it comes. That's where you you get paid. Mm -hmm. That's where you know. So everything you can do, play your part. 
I use this analogy all the time. We're not in a movie theater. Mm. You know, you sit back with popcorn and waiting for things to happen or for leaders to fail so you can criticize. Mm. You are an active participant. You are a protagonist. Yes, Mm. you're a protagonist on the stage. You're an actor. You have, you can do something that would also shape the future of your company. So I think that the role, like you said, co-creators, mm. we're co-creators yes. of the future together. Thank you. Oh my God. <laughs> like, if not for time, I don't even want this to end. Like, <laughs> thank you so much. It's an interesting conversation. And I pray that when I call you again, <laughs> you will come on board because there are a lot that we have to talk about mm. a lot mm. thank the, you so much thank you for having me and i'm so proud of you i need to say this <laughs> i'm terribly proud of you thank you well mom. done <laughs> thank you <laughs> all, right. all right so listeners send your comments your questions through africa business radio and in camel on instagram also follow us on all our social media platforms you can stream or download on africa business radio and other streaming platforms thank you